VSN presents Labatt's Blue Jays baseball. From Baltimore, it's the first game of a three-game series, the Blue Jays and the Orioles. Brought to you by Petro-Canada dealers and agents. Our energy is Canada. And by General Motors of Canada, who says join us at the 1988 Calgary Winter Olympics. Well, the Blue Jays this year have won 9 out of 10 against the Baltimore Orioles and outscored them in the last three games in Toronto, 31 to 5. But Buck Martinez, Baltimore is still a team you can't take too lightly. Well, Fergie, the only thing the Orioles can look forward to is being a spoiler. And any time you have Eddie Murray, Cal Ripken Jr., and Fred Lynn on your club, you have some offense. So I think the Blue Jays have to have their heads up when they come in here to Memorial Stadium. Dave Steve is back in the starting rotation tonight. He's 13 and 8. And there's a lot of excitement in that clubhouse before the game. Oh, no question about it. Steve has pitched his way back into the rotation. Jimmy Williams said he wanted the four best starters going for him. John Cerruti has struggled a little bit, but I think that gives them another left-hander out in the bullpen. that will help. And Mike Boddicker going to the mound for the Baltimore Orioles. He's their best pitcher, and he's 10-9 and nine this year. But it should be a great series. We'll be televising, of course, tonight's game and tomorrow night's right here from Baltimore. So Dave Steve at 13 and 8 against Mike Boddicker as the Toronto Blue Jays right now must win these three games so they can go back to Toronto no worse than a half game down against Detroit. You went through free agency this past winter and had some problems with it. Negotiations didn't go that well. Today, the arbitrator in New York ruled in favor of the Players Association regarding the 85 collusion case. What do you think that'll do for free agency? Well, hopefully it'll help it out. Uh, hopefully it'll get the owners uh, off of their cans and then try not to uh, uh, give the, the players a hard time. Uh, it, it's, it's unfortunate. I think everyone knew that that there was some type of conspiracy going on against the free agency and uh, it, it was an unfortunate winner or the last two winners for the free agent market because there just wasn't any any free agent market there. Uh, you know that's to me it's just part of a step uh, towards the players uh, winning the settlement. Uh, sure they agreed that it was a you know a collusion against against the players but now what do they do from this point where do they go from here to me that's going to be the biggest question. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Right-hander Mike Boddicker with a record of 10 and 9, making his 31st start of the season. He's 0-3 against the Blue Jays this year, 5 and 7 lifetime. There's the starting lineup he'll be facing for Toronto, brought to you by Rustoleum, the premium paint for metal. For the Blue Jays, Liriano will be leading off. Lloyd Mosby's back in center field after a day off. George Bell in his number four spot, 128 RBIs. Rick Leach is the DH tonight. Billy Upshaw play first base and bat ninth. As far as the defense, backing up Boddicker, Sheets, Hart, and Dwyer in the outfield. Ray Knight, the third baseman, Cal Ripken, Jr. Stanisic at second. He's played there ever since Billy Ripken was injured back in Toronto last week. Eddie Murray, the first baseman, and Terry Kennedy doing the catching. Boddicker's last start was against the Blue Jays and he lost seven to nothing. He only went five and a third in that one. Gave up ten hits, seven earned runs, walked four and struck out four. 0 and three this year against the Blue Jays as Nelson Liriano takes a strike to lead it off for Toronto. Liriano hitting 500 against the Orioles this year. Pops it up in the infield. Ripken the shortstop will call for it. One down. Boddicker is the type of guy that has a tendency to give the Jays trouble. He's an off-speed pitcher. Throws a Bosch ball combination, fork ball, curve ball. As you look at the pennant race in the East, Tigers up by a half a game. They are just starting in Boston. That's where Detroit's playing tonight, and it is raining there. But the game is just getting underway. We'll keep you posted on that one as Mosby takes the ball outside. Shaker didn't play yesterday in New York. He said his legs were bothering him and he needed a rest. Well, that field in New York 
was so wet in center field. That's where they played the football game, and they tore up the field. Mosby with a questionable hamstring, and Jimmy Williams opted to keep him out of that game yesterday. And Mosby goes down on strikes. Two down. Boddicker's coming out tonight throwing all fastballs, trying to establish a little bit different pattern against the Blue Jays. This one he turns over away from Mosby, way outside, but Mosby went after it. He has lost four in a row to Toronto. In fact, the last time he beat him was August of last year. He beat Joe Johnson in the Jays 12-2. Fernandez hitting close to 500 against these Orioles. Everybody's got a pretty good average against Baltimore, seems like. The Jays have won nine out of ten against Baltimore, while the Orioles have lost 12 of their last 13. And they won only one series against the East all year. That was against Cleveland back in April. Well, the Orioles are at a point they're going to have to turn it over. You've got to let some young kids play and suffer with the young kids. There's a schedule in the American League tonight. Big game, of course, in Boston. Tigers take on Boston. Oakland at Cleveland. Chicago and California. Kansas City at Seattle. Fernandez fights that fastball off. Fouls it down the third baseline. Snell is pitching for Detroit tonight and Sellers for Boston. It's funny the other day in at Yankee Stadium I was standing there when when uh, American League President Bobby Brown came in Marty Springstead the head of the umpires and they had Tony Fernandez back with him. He gave it to me and I took it down to the dressing room and Tony had a big smile on his face. Tony was going to bring that bat to Baltimore and give it back to Frank Robinson, but he took it out of the box and broke it in New York. <laughs> Snell was slated to start for Detroit, or for, uh, let me see now. Nipper is pitching for Boston tonight instead of Sellers. Snell is pitching for Detroit. Full count to Fernandez. And he goes down and strikes. Two in a row for Mike Boddicker and the Baltimore Orioles. No score after a half inning here in Baltimore. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Ernie Witt, not long ago, Dave Steve might have rejected the move to the bullpen, but this time he went down there with uh, good intentions on his mind and pitched his way back into the rotation. Well, he did. Uh, there's no question about it. He came out... Uh, the positive attitude and uh, I think he realized that we're, we are in a, a pennant race and I think he just wants to contribute any way he can to win and uh, he I think he deep down inside he knew that he wasn't really throwing the ball that well as a starter and maybe a, a trip to the bullpen would help him out and he did an outstanding job for us. Dave Steve has never won in this ballpark. He is three and seven lifetime against Baltimore. The starting lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Res 50. 50 years of double barreled protection. Pete Stanisak at second base for Billy Ripken. He's filling in. Cal Jr. is the shortstop batting behind Eddie Murray. That's the big punch in this lineup. Ray Knight's at third base. Terry Kennedy's the catcher. And Mike Hart's in center field. Here's the first pitch to Stanisak, and he fouls it out of play. Backing up Dave Steep. Bell, Mosby, and Barfield as usual in the outfield. Mullenix, Fernandez, Liriano, Upshaw, and Ernie Wood. Fergie looking at Dave Steve. His first two pitches, he's come right out throwing hard. There's Stanisek's number since being called up. 246, no homers, and five RBIs. Steve's got to come out and challenge these hitters. Buck, did Steve go to the bullpen with fire in his eyes? You know, was he upset? Is he uh, is he going to be out there tonight? He's going to be fired up. What's the story? What do you think? He was upset with the move, but he went down there trying to get back in the rotation, trying to help the club. I think he's out there tonight with the intention of showing that form of winning seven games in a row during the summer. In my mind, he's got to throw fastball slider and try to stay ahead of these hitters. 
fouled out of play. He has lost his last three decisions. He really wasn't throwing the ball that well. He was throwing a lot of off-speed pitches, trying to be too fine with the corners. Early in the year, he was throwing fastball slider going right at the hitters. His last two starts total him up. He lasted only four and two-thirds innings. So he's got a lot to prove out there tonight. He's got a big contract. He's got a record of 13 and 8. And I think the one thing that Dave Steve has more than anything else, and that's pride. That is my out tonight. That's what's going to make him pitch well. He wants to make sure that he gives him a fine effort and comes out there throwing. And into center field, but Mosby is right there, one down. That'll bring up Jimmy Dwyer, the right fielder. Well, Dwyer's been around. He's a 37-year-old veteran who's in his 13th season. And he's got a 320 lifetime average off Dave Steep. 14 homers, that's a career high. He's hit 321 since the All-Star break. He's a good fastball hitter. Likes the ball down and in. They'll try to make him hit off-speed pitches. Hard slider, try to run that slider in on his hands. It's fouled back out of play. And I think the one thing we'll notice tonight, Buck, is that we'll see a lot more fastballs from Steve. I think so, and we've talked to him. You know that there for a while he just didn't feel like he had a good fastball. Maybe it was just a mid-season blaze because his fastball didn't have the velocity that he had most of the summer. I think that little stint down in the pen might have refreshed him a bit. That's it to left field. Bell going back to the warning track, and he's got a two down. The two balls that were hit pretty hard here in the first inning off Steve. But in my mind, he's staying ahead of the hitters, going right after him. As long as they hit him, you got a chance to catch him. And that's the, that's the key, getting ahead of the hitters. It's a nice ballpark. Remember the grand slam you hit here? Of course, there's <laughs> only one of them. <laughs> was it right down that line? 309 down the line, and your grand slammer went 310? Just enough. They all count, don't they? Don't they? Boy, there was a good fastball he threw to Fred Lynn. Lynn's been bothered by a sore quad muscle. 22 homers. He's missed 41 games, so that's not too bad a production. Fred Lynn has had an injury-filled career, but he's had some great numbers. The long speed pitch over. Steve's falling behind. Two to one. Postponed bad field. Look <laughs> at that. Denver and Green Bay played in Milwaukee yesterday. That's it high in the air to center field, but Mosby will be there to corral this one. Three fly ball outs for Dave Steve, and after one, no score here at Baltimore. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. George Bell will lead it off for the Blue Jays here in the second inning. Wasn't that great drama yesterday in New York, Buck, when the rookie Al Leiter knocked Bell down, and then in Bell's next at bat, he hit the living daylights out of that ball, about 450, 460 feet. Two-run homer. Ask him if he is mad. Oh. He said, you bet I was mad. <laughs> I was beside him in the dugout, practically, maybe five or six feet away from him, and uh, I couldn't repeat what he was saying, but he was really fired up. Cecil Fielder made a comment in the paper today. Don't get this guy mad. You're, you're better off just leaving him alone. There's so many great hitters that are like that. One of them's in the Oriole dugout down there, Frank Robinson. You didn't want to knock him down. There's no score at the end of one up in Boston. Isn't that something, though, that there's Frank game in Milwaukee, in New York, after the Blue Jays go into Yankee Stadium and manager Jimmy Williams has to protest all four games? It's unfortunate. They even flew their lawyer and their club lawyer, Gordy Kirk, to do all the paperwork on those protests. <laughs> There's the difference of a brushback pitch that Bell has no objection to down around the letters. That's hit in the gap in left field. It'll drop in for a base hit as Sheets will fire it in. 
So George Bell leads off the second with a single. Larry Sheets did a pretty good job cutting that ball off. You can see how wet it is out there. He's replacing some divots. Boddicker comes back with a breaking ball. Bell stays right on it and drives it into left center. This has got a chance to go for extra bases, but look at there. Larry Sheets bare hands it and keeps Bell at first base. Nice play. That'll bring up the catcher, Ernie Witts. Ernie Witt has hit five home runs against Baltimore this year. Remember, of course, he got three in that 10 home run game. Nine RBIs. And that'll go into the stands out of play. Well, George Bell's down at first. He has five stolen bases. Very seldom do you see him run. One thing about Bell, he can steal you a base if you need one. Oh, he can get the big stolen base, no question about it. He's a pretty smart runner over there. He understands the game, when he should run, when he can run against particular pitchers and catchers. Kennedy's had a real rough time throwing people out. Good job there by Kennedy. Keeps that ball in front of him. Kennedy's only thrown out 31 runners out of 131 attempts. This program protected by copyright. Any use without permission is prohibited. Three nights of great baseball from Baltimore. And it really sets up the Detroit Blue Jay four game series. And all baseball fans all across the country are really getting fired up for that one. But this is the series at hand for the Blue Jays. They must win all three here. There's the Tiger sign. Howie Stark with the PR director for the Blue Jays said everybody, every type of media in the country's applied for credentials for that series. We have a full house. Our producer Tom McKee tells me it's chilly up in Boston tonight. It's raining and cold. Not the kind of conditions that are conducive to a good ball game. Three balls and two strikes to Witt. There goes Bell. And Witt fouls that one out of play into the stands. Half a game ahead of the Blue Jays. The Tigers really don't think too much about the weather at this point. They're playing them one at a time also. They know they got a big series ahead of them. They're in Boston. Boston, the same as this Oriole club, they're trying to play tough against the Tigers. I've had a lot of people ask me, why not play Ernie Witt the final 13 games of the season? What do you think of that? Whether right-hander or left-hander's pitcher? That might not be a bad move, but you know, Jimmy Williams is stuck by the platoon system right down the line. He hits so well against the Tigers, that might be something to think about. Mm -hmm. He does such a great job. He got 18 or 19 career home runs. Tigers, there's a look at the skipper. He's done a great job this month of September, bringing those kids in and out of the bullpen. David Wells, Dwayne Ward really pitched in in this penetrate. I know he had a meeting with Key, Clancy, and Flanagan before the game, and there was some thought maybe he might not change the rotation, but give them another day's rest. But I know that they came out of that meeting and everything's going to remain the same. I think that's a wise decision. The guys have pitched well since going to four men. It gives, especially now with Cerruti going to the pen, he has pitched so well in the swing position, pitching long, short, middle out there in the pen. I think it gives him a little more depth in that bullpen. There goes Bell. And that's popped up in the infield, so Bell will go back to first. Ripken will make the play. One down. Bring up the right fielder, Jesse Barfield. Barfield's been hot lately. His last 18 games hitting around 340. Hasn't hit for power, but at least he's making contact, getting his base hits. What that does raises your confidence level. He's getting his hits. His average is creeping up to 261. And as he continues to swing the bat well, getting base hits, the power will come. Hey, if he gets a few big home runs down this stretch, boy, a lot of people will forget about the rest of the summer. I'll tell you the guy that's really come up with some big base hits for the Blue Jays has been Willie Upshaw. Never mind his numbers. 
You almost wish now when it was a crucial hit for this ball club, you'd like to see Willie Upshaw up there. Well, you know, he's so steady, so confident. Right? Bat flies out of Barfield's hands. Steve Palermo, the first base umpire, will pick it up, give it to the bat boy. But talking about Upshaw, you know, it's been really an off season, although he has 15 home runs and 58 RBIs. He has really chipped in with the clutch hits, like you mentioned, Fergie. And when he's up there, I'm sure he knows that it's his opportunity to chip in and really add some offense. And boys come through in the clutch. Get two home runs in the Yankee series. One two pitch to Barfield hit down to Ripken should be two. Stanisic double play to Eddie Murray. So we head to the bottom of the second inning. Still no score here at Memorial Stadium between the Blue Jays and the Orioles. You're watching the bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. No score here in Baltimore. Bottom of the second inning just one hit in the ball game. A single by George Bell as Eddie Murray will lead it off for the Orioles. Murray with a 340 lifetime average against Dave Steve and five career home runs. He's done a pretty good job over the years. Ivy has tattooed quite a few pitchers. No score, Detroit and Boston. Nipper pitching for Boston. Snell for Detroit. A lot of talk around Baltimore about trading this man. Slap foul down the right side. Even if you did trade Eddie Murray, he's got a contract of $2 million. What are you going to get in return? All you want is somebody to assume that contract. You might get a player or two. But then if you trade Murray, is it a quick fix for this ball club? Because they need more than a quick fix. Well, they've got to come up with some young people. There's no question. It's a long-term deal for the Orioles. Like you mentioned they're not going to turn it around overnight. Talking to Frank Robinson before the game, it's a matter of a couple of years. There's an upcoming series. Four games. Tigers at Toronto. That slap foul. Bittner Scarf Day is on Saturday. Sunday is Panasonic Fan Appreciation Day. I think most of the tickets are sold out. Uh, I know that there are some general admissions still available for that four game series. Two balls and two strikes to Eddie Murray. He's on a 13 game hitting streak. Going inside, full count. You know, you could put sheets at first base, but it just depends on what's available for Eddie Murray. They definitely need some pitching help. And he has said on more than one occasion he wants to go to the Dodgers. Lined up the middle, base hit. Bring up Cal Ripken, the shortstop. Swings a 38-ounce bat. Watch how smoothly he swings it. Line drive, one-handed, right back up the middle. He just punched that, one, didn't he? He's a good player. You get him in a right frame of mind, he is down. He likes to win. He's a good competitor. He wants to be on a winning team, and things are down right now. There's another question mark here. Cal Ripken, he's a free agent at the end of this year. I guess the free agents will be back in action. Boy, <laughs> sounds of things. It's a good year for free agents. Dale Murphy of the Braves, Tim Wallach of the Expos, Cal Ripken. Chop foul. This is Mike Greenwell at the plate. Takes a change up over the fence, and Boston has a lead against Detroit. How about that one? That one way back. Boy, Greenwell's come on. He made the move. He sure hit it. Uh, it was outstanding field. against Toronto. 0-2 oh, pitch just outside here at Baltimore to Cal Ripken. A ball and two strikes. Red Sox also a club in transition. Young players Sam Horn, Mike Greenwell, Todd Benzinger. He had a home run off Tom Deaton for your last night here in Baltimore. I'll tell you, our producer Tom McKee is sure on the bit. I don't know, he must have made 20 or 30 phone calls to get those highlights to, 
to see if we couldn't pass them on to the people back in Toronto and across Canada. That's terrific. So we'll have some highlights for you throughout the evening on that Detroit-Boston game. Up to shallow right, Liriano will go out there. One down. That'll bring up Larry Sheets. Sheets just having an outstanding season. He's tied for the club lead in home runs with Eddie Murray at 29. And RBI's Cal Ripken with 90. He said the opportunity to play against left-handers has really made him a better hitter. Look at those numbers. His concentration level is up. He's got confidence knowing he's going to play all the time. He's had a fine year. 50 for 142 at a 352 pace over his last 40 games. Eddie Murray down at first is not a stolen base threat. In fact, in tonight's lineup, Stenisic is probably the only player you'll see try. He has stolen five bases. Freddie Lynn is seven, but he's playing with an injury. It's one thing the Orioles do not do. They normally need at least three singles to score a run. They've always been a club with not an awful lot of team speed. Go all the way back to Al Bumbry before you can get to anybody that was a stolen base threat. Quick throw, made a cut. Very drifting off a little bit. Well, he got picked off in a game yesterday because Boston played a doubleheader here and the Red Sox won both games. He got picked off a second. There's a chopper, could be two. Liriano will go to Fernandez. Dump shot, double play. Nice play by the little second baseman, Nelson Liriano. So after two innings here in Baltimore, Liriano turns and wheels a strike to Fernandez, who really unloads this ball. Look how far out of the line he had to go and throws a strike. Sheets not good speed. He's out at first. So at the end of two, there's no score in Baltimore. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSM. Billy Smith and John McLaren, as usual, doing the coaching at first and third. Mike Boddicker will face Rance Mullinix, who's having a great second half for Toronto. Mullinix, since the All-Star break, hitting almost 350. He's driven in 25 and has hit six home runs. And looks like the Mullinix of old, doesn't he? He's got that great swing working. Average up to 308. Boddicker has really gone out and thrown the fastball. The world will spread up and down the Blue Jay bench. Get ready for that fastball first pitch. Chop foul. Off speed pitch. It doesn't take long for the word to spread. Hitters will come back their first time. They'll sit around Cito Gaston and say, hey, Cito, he's changing his pattern a little bit. He's going with the fastball. He gets Mullinix on a breaking ball. Let's go to Boston. Benzinger at the plate. Sam Horn at first. Snell, the pitcher. There's a drive to left center field. And let's see what happens. There goes Chet Lemon. Back to the wall. He can't get it. It's off the wall. That's definitely going to score Horn. Benzinger has a triple, so it's 2 nothing. Look at the Boston. Look at Big Sam. Sam he's hustling. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Gibson throws it back. It's two nothing Red Sox. Rick Leach, the hitter here. No balls and a strike to him. He fouls another one off. 0 2. You can see how late Leach was. You come in here and you think Boddicker, everything's going to be off speed. He, Boddicker busted Leach inside. Petrie is now warming up for Detroit. done is he's established the fastball. Now he has the hitters in between. They don't know which pitch to look for. Generally they're going to look off speed but he's thrown some pretty good fastballs tonight. There's another one right by Leach. That's strikeout number four for Boddicker against these Blue Jays. They 
bring up Willie Upshaw. He set him up inside fastball, slow curveball, Leach fought off, and then he come back with a high fastball. Leach couldn't lay off. Boddicker's had a great season against the West. He's nine and three in 19 starts, and against the East, one and six. He's five and eight in his last 18 starts. So I tell you what, I mean the Boddicker that we're looking at here tonight is a much improved Boddicker, the one we saw back in Toronto where the Blue Jays beat him seven nothing. We talked about the pride of this Oriole team. They've had their pride drugged through the mud this summer. They're going to look at 14 wins against the East. And they know if they can Seven play... 7-45 against the five teams that are ahead of them. Upshaw lines it into right field. Drops in. Could go for extra bases. He's rounding first, and he's heading to second for a double with two out. So Willie Upshaw continues to swing a hot bat for Toronto. Here's Spike Owen up in Boston. Benzinger is down at third. And is that Berkman Dave or Darrell Evans. Evans? Evans. So he's the first baseman there. It is now three to nothing for Boston. They're in the second inning still. Upshaw's 22nd double down the right field line. He's on with two outs for Nelson Liriano. There's the score. Boston three. Detroit nothing. Liriano popped up to Ripken, the shortstop, so he's 0 for 1. Got a second home run yesterday at Yankee Stadium. Just his second home run of the season. His first at Yankee Stadium. That ball pretty good, too, the left field. for Baltimore received the Cannon Sure Shot Supreme, the only Cameron's class with case and five-year battery at no extra charge. Sure Shot Supreme so advanced every shot's a sure shot. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of the player of the game in Cannon at a future game. So Boddicker's behind in the count to Liriano, two balls and a strike. And up in Boston, Snell is out of the game for Detroit. And I would assume that it's Petrie in now. He was warming up in the bullpen. And that'll drift back in the stands as well. A lot of play. He puts it up at two and two. I don't know if that's good news or not. Van Petrie's really done a pretty good job coming out of the pen. He's in there early. Almost like a start. They're down by three, but we all know that the Tigers can score some runs, especially in Fenway Park. Interesting to see if the Red Sox can tack on some more against Dan Petrie. Counting tonight, they've got 14 games left to play. Seven at home, seven on the road. Blue Jays, 13 left. Six on the road and three. Seven at home. Three here, of course, and three in Detroit. Full count to Luriano. What an exciting time of the season. Lined up the middle. And look at that catch by the center fielder, Mike Hart. Takes a base hit away from Liriano. Boy, if that didn't look like a Freddie Lynn play. He charged hard, had it made in his mind he was going to catch it. Watch the concentration, goes down, makes a fine stab, shows it to the umpire, and he saves the Orioles a run. No score here, heading to the bottom of the third. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Terry Crowley at first, Jimmy Williams down at third base, and it was really nice on the scoreboard here. They did a tribute to Mike Flanagan, and they said, welcome back, Mike. Played the song, You Gotta Have Heart. Surely one of the most popular Orioles. They say he's really he's great with the one-liners. Funny. Now I guess pitch too. Yeah, he's a pretty good pitcher. I'm sure they'd rather have him out on the mound than telling jokes in a dugout. Yeah, I'll say. Ray Knight has really struggled the last 35 games, hitting about 175. Down to Fernandez, the shortstop. Two upshot, one down here in the bottom of the third inning. 
Marzano at the plate up in Boston. Here's the first pitch from Dan Petrie. Gibson is playing in left field. Let's see what happens here. Runner on in scoring position at second. Gibson charges that ball and boots it. Spike, and Spike Owen. Owen will score. It is four to nothing for Boston. Terry Kennedy, the hitter here against Dave Steve. Steve has allowed just one base hit, one down in the third inning. No score. Toronto and Baltimore. He's done a nice job, Kennedy, for these Baltimore Orioles. Now the second pitch from Dan Petrie, Ellis Burks has doubled. Got runners at second and third, so Boston, they're swinging the lumber tonight. See what I said about Petrie? You come in there and shut him down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you keep making predictions like that. We're going to keep you around. Uh huh. Especially when Detroit's involved. Don't forget, I, if memory serves me. Boston led 5 0 last week, didn't they? In Detroit. So Kennedy goes down for Dave Steve. That's his first strike out of the ball game. Here's the good fastball we're looking for. Goes it right by Kennedy. Kennedy, pretty good fastball hitter, but Steve's got a good one tonight. That's a good sign for the Blue Jays. Mike Hart. Oh, what a catch he made off the bat of Nelson Liriano. Saved a run with upshot second. Four home runs since being recalled from Rochester. Rochester hit 20 this year. Two fifty-seven on the season at Rochester. Take a look at his forearms. Looks like he's been diving a few other times for fly balls. He got scrapes and scratches all over his forearms. Steve likes likes to work quickly. Is that good or bad? When he's throwing well, he likes to work quickly. When he's not throwing well, he'll take a lot of time out there. It tells me he's got a lot of confidence in himself tonight. He's got a good velocity, feels good, feels like he's throwing the fastball well. Here's a 3-0 pitch to Hart. So you can generally tell pitchers will kick the dirt, grab the rosin bag. They generally don't have their good stuff. He's on a mission tonight. There's no doubt about that. Get in the air to right field. Barfield will come in. Luriano will move away from the play. Three up, three down for Dave Steve and the Toronto Blue Jays. And after three here in Baltimore, still no score. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN update. We go to the fourth inning here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Mosby, Fernandez, and Bell will face Mike Boddicker. What a job he has done so far. Boddicker has allowed just two hits. He struck Mosby out in the first. He has four strikeouts so far. He hasn't walked anybody. It'll be interesting to see how the Jays react to Boddicker the second time around. He's really gone out of character, throwing an awful lot of fastballs, but it's really been successful for him. You've got to feel like he's going to switch back to his off-speed stuff now that he has established the fastball. Might not do that until he has a little problem with the fastball. But boy, he's going right to the fastball. Fergie noticed how quick he's working too. Mm -hmm. he get that ball in fire, and he's got a lot of confidence in his stuff tonight. Ball and two strikes to the shaker. Change up that got Lloyd Mosby for the second time tonight. Number five for Boddicker. Once you put fastball in hitters' minds as much as Boddicker has, boy, that changeup really becomes a potent pitch. And he's got a great changeup. Now, Fernandez takes his time getting to the plate. As you look at Boddicker, Boddicker, along with Eric Bell, are the only two Baltimore pitchers who have logged 150 innings or more. Just to tell you what their problem has really been here in Baltimore. Pitching is the name of the game. Good arms. TPRA is about 5.07. Blue Jays right around 
Two balls, no strikes. Hernandez, number four, triple department. Tony, uh, Tony only needs 18 hits to have a second 200 season. You see what uh, Mike Morgan said about Phil Bradley up there in Seattle. He said anybody can play left field and get hits when nobody's on. Phil doesn't get any clutch hits for us. Pretty heavy words for your teammate, huh? I wonder if those two went to Fifth City. <laughs> the inning is over, so Boston, they lead it four to nothing. They had the bases loaded Greenwell at the plate, who had already homered in the inning. And he flied up to center field. So it's 4 0 Boston. Get down the line, but that'll curve foul into the stands. Two balls, two strikes to Tony Fernandez. You can see that Fernandez has been late on Boddicker's fastball. You would think that Boddicker would stay with it. That he does. Now Fernandez has to go through his mind and say, do I change, look for a fastball and try to gear it up? Knowing full well that Boddicker's bread and butter over the years has been the off-speed pitch. So Boddicker's really at the controls in this at bat. Now he can come with that off-speed pitch. Fernandez knowing that he's way behind the fastball. But he stays with that heat. Stand up there and foul him off all day long. Well, there's the pennant race, and here's the interesting figure, I think. Look at that against left-handers. The Jays are 25 and 22, but look at Detroit, 18-27. They're nine games under 500 against left-handers. I think that's the deciding thing in the entire series, because you know that the Blue Jays with their left-handers start throwing Jimmy Key at them and Mike Flanagan and Cerruti. They've got uh, Musselman and Wells out of the bullpen. I think that's going to be the big thing in that series. They certainly have enough left-handers. Something they haven't had over the years. Down to the second baseman, Stanisic. Two down. Boddicker just didn't bend from his approach to Fernandez. He went right with the fastball right to the end and got the ground ball off Fernandez's bat. This does a little bit to change your defense because Boddicker has always been an off-speed pitcher and you're going to have a tendency to play the hitters to pull. So they're going to have to play more straight up, I would think, and check in the defense. They're pretty well straight up at every position, infield and outfield. Bell's got five home runs this year off Baltimore pitching. Fouls that back out of play. Boy, well, you can see he was looking for that oh, first pitch oh, fastball. Sounded good, but went the wrong direction. 46 home runs. You remember when the Oakland A's were in town, Reggie Jackson spoke with George Bell and says, hey man, go for 50 because there's only been 10 other guys in the history of baseball to hit 50 home runs in a season. Fastball was outside, one and one. Down the line. It'll hit the corner, bounce out. Bell's got to hurry. He's got a double, two for two tonight. Boy, that left field grass just about caused a serious injury to Larry Sheets as he was going over in the corner. Bell really hooks this fastball just inside the bag at third base. It'll tear him off the grandstands down in the left field corner. It'll kick over towards Sheets and he'll have to change directions. Watch the top of your screen. As he steps right there, he just slipped back in there. You see that big divot. He almost turned his ankle on that wet turf. But Bell's on with the two-out double. Catcher Ernie Wet steps in. He popped up to the shortstop, Cal Ripken. No score in this game. Inside. Nice save by Kennedy. Terry Kennedy's really anchored that catcher's position. For the Orioles. 17 homers. Ernie Witt's 
Got him by one in that department. He's got 18 on the season. And deep to right field. And Dwyer back to the warning track, and he's got it. Red hit that ball pretty good. So the Baltimore Orioles get off the hook here in the fourth inning. And the Blue Jays leave a runner stranded. No scores. You watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Bottom of the fourth inning. No score here at Memorial Stadium. In the third inning, it was three up, three down for the Detroit Tigers. With two down, Lou Whitaker doubled off the left field wall, sauntered into second base, and he was thrown out. You know how short that wall is there. You certainly can't take anything for granted. Maybe they're falling apart. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they've panicked. Pete Stanisek will lead it off. He lined out to Mosby, the center fielder. He's 0 for 1. Steve has struck out one. The big thing with Dave Steve tonight so far, he has not walked anyone through three. Well, we mentioned we were looking for his velocity. He's got good velocity on his fastball. Stannis Hack has come quickly through the Orioles organization. Last year he played at Hagerstown. A ball moved up to Charlotte this year, started the season there, went to Rochester, and eventually made his way to Baltimore. Three balls and a strike. Stanisic has made 17 starts for the Orioles this season. Started at third base. Pittsburgh beating Montreal. A high chopper down to Fernandez. And he makes it look oh so easy. One down. That'll bring up the right fielder, Jimmy Dwyer. Stanisek has stolen base speed, but not that great of speed down the line. And Fernandez just flips over to Upshaw. Stanisek's out fairly easily. Dwyer flied out to Bell in left field, so he's 0 for 1. He's putting together a pretty decent second half. 321 since the All-Star break. Davy Phillips behind the plate. Steve Palermo at first. Dan Morrison at second and Al Clark down at third base. Those are your umpires for tonight. First changeup I've seen Steve throw tonight. Third ball change up to Dwyer. They know he's a good fastball hitter. That's it deep to right. Uh, Barfield back. That's out of here. Jimmy Dwyer with his 15th home run of the season. A 1 0 Baltimore lead. What Steve did differently to Dwyer was he started him out curveball change up, got behind no balls and two strikes. Had to come in there with a fastball right down in Dwyer's wheelhouse. No question about this one is Jimmy Dwyer has his 15th home run of the season. Right over the 360 foot mark. That fastball was as you would say Buck right down Broadway. Right down the middle. But the key to the at bat was the fact that he missed with the first two pitches. Something he hadn't done to that point. He's been ahead every, of all the Oriole hitters, but he fell behind curveball changeup. Two balls, no strikes, and had to come in there. Right away, back into the groove. Fastball to Fred Lynn. Lynn is 0 for 1. He flied out to Mosby at center field in the first inning. That's hit deep to right, but not as deep as Dwyer's, as Barfield will wait for the catch. You go strike one on the hitter, just takes that aggressiveness away from him. You have that doubts about the different pitch selection you might come with. Fred Lynn didn't have a real good swing at that pitch, just lazy fly ball into right. Dwyer, on the other hand, he was in charge when he had the count in his favor. Steve behind 
two balls, no strikes. Eddie Murray singled in the second. Two down here, fourth inning. Orioles lead it one to nothing. Behind two balls, no strikes. Look at Dwyer, 10th career home run versus the Jays. Larry Sheets on the left. Fastball there. Two balls and a strike to Murray. Well, Dwyer's a veteran hitter who's always hit well against Toronto, isn't he? Well, you know, the Toronto staff over the years has always been a hard-throwing staff, and that's what Dwyer likes. Likes that fastball. When you were catching last year, how did you pitch to Dwyer? Tried to throw him off-speed pitches, but he was always a very aggressive fastball hitter. Eddie Murray makes his way down to first, as that's the first walk given up by Steve. Cal Ripken will step in. He popped up to Liriano, the second baseman. He's 0 for 1. Ripken, his worst major league season, hitting just 255 as Jimmy Williams looks on. The man that has made many moves. And is obviously he's not afraid to make him. No, he's not. He doesn't care who he's making him with either. Back in Milwaukee, he took Steve out of the rotation. That's hit to center field off the end of the bat. Mosby will wait for it for the third out. So the Baltimore Orioles, thanks to a home run by Jimmy Dwyer, lead it one to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Mike Boddicker has allowed only three hits through four innings of play here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and the Orioles lead it one to nothing, while Boston may lead four to nothing still in the bottom of the third inning up at Fenway tonight against Detroit. And it is raining very hard in Boston. The players are still on the field, but if it keeps up, they might have a rain delay up there. That's not good news, is it? <laughs> Boy, you're hoping for rain in one spot, and yeah. not hoping for it in another. Firefield fouls that back out of play. I absolutely could not believe that they played a ball game in Yankee Stadium last Friday night. It's a game you and I did, but yeah, as, as hard as, as, it, as it, rained. it rained, right, all day long. Field was a mess in center field to begin with. And then they go into Milwaukee today because they played that football game there yesterday, Denver and Green Bay. They postponed it because of field conditions. A chopper. Barfield could beat this one up. He does. Base hit. Barfield continues to get base hits. He's on the base. He's not driving the ball away. You'd like to see him, but he's getting base hits. He's a base runner, and he can always come around to score. Ray Knight in quickly at third. Fires across the infield with Barfield's hustle. It's himself a base hit. You know, that's his 12th hit in about 31 at bats. I guarantee you, five or six of those hits have been, uh, as you say, infield bleeders. He'll take him, I'm sure. He's got his average up over 260 for the first time in a long while. Mullenix, the batter. He hits that deep to left field. Sheets won't get this one. It's off the wall. Barfield heads to third. And Mullenix has a double. For Mullenix. His 25th double of the season. Good piece of hitting by Molnix. What he did was he stayed with Boddicker's plan. He looked for the off-speed pitch and got it. Watch him take it the opposite direction. Hits it off the left field wall. Larry Sheets really plays this well. It's the carom. Fires into second, but Molnix is in there with a double. Runners at second and third for the Blue Jays. Now Rick Leach, the DH, will step in. Leach struck out in the third. 
He's got 22 RBIs. Orioles defense is back in the infield. Nobody out. Lee should be looking for, uh, at least for a fly ball. Well, we'll uh, score one. Infield grounder will get the Jays a run. Let's put into the upper deck foul. Early in the game, it's only the top of the fifth. And Cal Ripken wants to make sure they don't have to start a big inning. There's the Boston score. They're up by four at the end of three over the Tigers. Once again, Bonica goes to that high fastball to Rick Leach. Leach just trying to put it in play here. He's got the infield back. He's been hitting close to 500 with runners in scoring position. Let's look at the end here. Stanisek deep at second, very deep at first. Lights that one off, puts it in the upper deck. You can see that Kennedy gave a high target to Boddicker, trying to make sure he gets that fastball up. Leach being such a good low ball hitter. Let's see where. Yeah, he's going to go out and talk it over with him right now. He's calling Ripken in. They're probably going to change signs. Molinex on second base. He's been there for a few pitches now. They're talking to Ripken, going to change the sign. And he, Ripken to go over and tell his second baseman the new set of signs they'll use. The infield is so important for infielders to know the signs so they can position themselves. If it's an off-speed pitch, Leach will pull it to the right side. Second baseman needs to know so he can get a jump on it. Leach down the line, but it is foul. The ball girl has to get out of the way. I don't think she didn't get in front of that one. Leach was looking for that high fastball that time. She'll be charged with an air. There's no way you could ever charge her with an air. Change up off the handle. Oh, they get Mullinix. Touch him, one run scores. They get a double play on the ball. Mullinix was betwixt and between. He didn't know what to do. I tell you, Jesse Barfield almost got hung up at third also. This ball jams Rick Leach. He steps, now watch Mullinix is off the bag. Ripken tags him, fires on to first. But Barfield really got a late break at third base also. From this angle, watch Leach, he steps and then swings. The ball kicks off the mound. Molnix is in between. He doesn't know which way to go. Now he's out on the tag. Ripken fires the first for a double play. And Upshaw's the batter. He swung and missed at the first pitch. It's tied up at one now. A big break for the Baltimore Orioles. Leach actually waited on that pitch nicely, didn't he? Sort of, uh, it was almost like a double clutch for him. It sure was, but then he jammed himself yep. once he went after it. Just did it right to shortstop Ripken. France has got to go right back to the bag on that play. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Upshaw outside. What happens on that play is Leach stepped the swing, held his bat back waiting on the slow curveball, and then put it into play, and it hung Molnix up there. He wasn't quite sure how well it was hitting. It had him hitting flat-footed is exactly what it did. And hitting that way, you have no power whatsoever. And all you all you can hope to do really is, is to hit a little line drive uh, through a gap. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to upshot. Cost Rick Leach an RBI also. Yep. But they got to run across to tie the game. Full count to Willie. The Orioles have lost 46 home games. And one more, and they tie their all-time record, set in 55. You know they're going to do that. Up 
Bradshaw goes down, number six for Bodekert. But as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, it's tied at one here at Memorial Stadium. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The guy that George Bell is going to have to beat out for the MVP in the American League, Alan Trammell, hits a shot into the screen, top of the fourth inning. It is four to one now. Boston still leading. But Trammell having a great year for Detroit. And of course, uh, all the talk has been George Bell or Alan Trammell for MVP. You could argue for either one of them very strongly. They have both had well, outstanding years. You're arguing with. That's right. <laughs> Sheets will lead it off. He hit into a double play in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Rick Leach gets an RBI on that. Upshaw makes a nice play. We'll step on the bag for the unassisted put up. Because the double play wasn't a forced double play, your normal double play, Ripken to tag second, fire to first, that double play would not credit Rick Leach with an RBI. But since Molnix got hung up at shortstop, he was tagged by Ripken, fired on the first base for the double play. Rick Leach is credited with an RBI. Leach's 22nd, 23rd RBI of the season. Ray Knight grounded out in the third. Makes a fastball from Steve. Steve gave up a home run in the fourth inning to Jimmy Dwyer with one down. He fell behind in the count. Ernie Witt will be our guest tonight on extra innings. And with Witt sitting there behind the plate catching Steve, it would be a great opportunity for you to ask him about Steve and what he thinks of the way Steve's season is gone. Don't forget Steve had a seven game winning streak and they took him out of the starting rotation after he did not get a decision of three or four starts. In my mind Steve has had a fine year. I think coming out of spring training if they'd have been able to plan on him for 12 victories I'm sure they'd have been pleased. Pretty good pitch right there. But he's 13 and 8 coming into this game. I think it's been a pretty good year overall. He's pitched 171 innings for the team. Only given up 154 hits. That's a very good ratio. Hits to innings pitched. It's a full count now tonight. Steve has given up the fewest homers on the uh, starting staff. Dwyer's Steve's 15th home run that he's given up. That's Cerruti who's given up 28. Key has given up 22. But mind you, they have thrown many more innings. That hits him on the elbow, and he's on. That's the seventh batter that Steve has hit. He led the American League last year in that department. Fastball runs inside tonight, catches him on the elbow. He just couldn't pull out of the way. And Steve just had that ball paling inside. There's the score reflecting Trammell's homer. The Pittsburgh Montreal game. Pittsburgh leading four to one in the fourth. Drabic on the mound for Pittsburgh. Boy, that pirate team has Eskett. played tough, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Jim got 12 saves for the Pirates. I just caught the tail end last night. Andy Van Slyke's sacrifice fly. I think it was in the 14th inning. Drove in the winning run to beat the Mets. Mets Strawberry did not do a good job in right field. Mets had the lead three different times in that game. Just couldn't hold on to it. The Pirates never gave up. Darnell Coles, former Tiger, hit a grand slam to tie it up 6-6. A ball and a strike to Kennedy. does not have a stolen base this season. That's it into center field. Mosby will take a few steps over and make the play. And Knight will hustle back to first. Two down. That'll bring up Mike Hart, the center fielder. 
Hart flied out to Barfield in right. He's 0 for 1. Knight hasn't had a bad year. Remember the salary cut he had to take coming to Baltimore. At least he got to play. He's got some decent numbers. 59 RBIs. That's not bad production. They hit 11 home runs with the Mets last year. Finished eighth in the National League at hitting. 298. Made a great catch off the bat of Nelson Liriano in the third inning. To take a hit away from Liriano with upshot down at second base, and he surely would have scored. Hart's been forced into action with Ken Gerhardt going down. Hit, a, hit by a pitch, broke his hand. You talk about a guy that's having problems here in Baltimore. How about this man right here? Cal Ripken Sr. 30 years in the organization. Yeah. Gets a chance to manage, and boy, they have a disastrous yeah, year. Not a whole lot you can do. You can't manage a team without players. Hit to left field. Bell has got to go back. He's got it. Nice running catch by George Bell. Left field. Ray Knight down at first. Bell missed that. Knight surely would have scored. George Bell really hustling. Look at the concentration on his face. Makes up his mind to catch it. Just outruns the ball down a left field corner. The end of five. It's 1 1 in Baltimore. You're watching the Mets. Blue Jay baseball on TSN. Now let's go to TSN control for this update. Right hander Mike Vodiger has done a nice job. He's allowed the Blue Jays five hits tonight. It's tied at one. George Bell has two of the hits, a single and a double. Barfield with a single. Mullenix and Upshaw with doubles. Looked like the Jays had Boddicker on the ropes in the fifth, although they got one run in. They had runners at second and third with nobody out and could only get one run. Liriano lines it into the right field corner. It's a foul ball. Watching Liriano take a whack at that first pitch from Boddicker, Frank Robinson and I were talking before the game about the number of home runs in baseball in general. And he said, you know, the big guys aren't hitting that many more. It's guys like Liriano, the little guys that are supposed to be ping hitters. There's a look at Robinson. Who was Terry, elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 82. Terry Crowley next to him, but the little guys are just swinging, hitting home runs, trying to swing and hit the ball in the alleys, hit home runs. They're no longer required simply to get on base. They're up there hacking. There's another good example. Mike Sharperson has just been traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers for right-handed pitcher Juan Guzman. Now, is that Jose's brother? We've got to find that out. Uh, how no, start is it? a Puerto Rican. Okay. And this Guzman, of course, is from the Dominican Republic. Now, Sharperson will be in uniform tomorrow for the Dodgers, so they have moved it. Liriano strikes out. One down here in the sixth inning. Lloyd Mosby, you played a series in New York on a terrible field, and as a result, you stayed out of yesterday's game with a hamstring problem. How's that tonight? Well, it feels a lot better uh, today, Buck, but I think uh, the most important thing is that you don't want a couple days in New York to kind of reflect on the next 13 games of the season, which is going to be very important. So I just took the liberty of taking that day off, and uh, hopefully I can be a lot better for the next 13 games. Right on the nose, but Pete Stanisak takes a hit away from Mosby. Good to see Lloyd up to full speed once again. Watch this. Boddicker fastball. Mosby ready for it. Hits it right on the nose, but right at second base from Pete Stanisak. Makes a nice play. So with two down, that'll bring up the shortstop, Tony Fernandez. Just another note on uh, Guzman. As we've just got word from Boston, the Red Sox have the bases loaded, and Mike Greenwell is at the plate again. Red Sox lead that one four to one. It's tied at one here. Top of the sixth inning. That's hit to straightaway center field. Mike Hart is there. 
So an easy inning for Mike Boddicker and the Baltimore Orioles. Three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the sixth, tied at one. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Bottom of the sixth inning, tied at one at Memorial Stadium. As we'll have hitting for the Baltimore Orioles, Stanisic, Dwyer, and Lynn, the top of the order. And Buck, one thing about Steve this year, if you look at his 13 wins, he's had lots of run support. The Jays have outscored their opposition 116 to 37. It's 13 victories. But right here, it's tied at one. He could use some of those runs on this one. We well, you know that bodes well also for the fact that he was throwing effectively because he gave up 37 runs over the years. He really hasn't had that much run support, but this year it's been the opposite. Good breaking ball. Stanisic right is 0 for 2 tonight, lined out in the first, grounded out in the fourth inning. Just a note on that uh, Juan Guzman, who the Blue Jays got from the Dodgers for Mike Sharperson tonight, struck out 113 in 110 innings. In Bakersfield, we finished with a record of five and six and 21 starts. He walked 84 and 110 innings, too. Looks like he's a hard thrower. Boy, what a slider right there. Tied up Stanisak. Steve put that slider right in on his hands. That's just the second strikeout tonight for Dave Steve. Jim Dwyer. And Dwyer hit a home run earlier, but in Boston, his passed ball. And it is now five to one. Add notes, John Marzano comes across with the fifth Boston run. Petrie on the mound now. Remember what uh, Morris said about Lance Parrish and Matt Noakes. They started. He said, I don't care how many home runs <laughs> Noakes hit. Parrish is still a better catcher. Pops it up in the infield. Liriano comes in, Fernandez comes in, two down. The Labatt's player of the game for Toronto will receive the Hitachi DA 400 compact disc player. Hitachi's complete line of CDs features advanced digital audio technology and the most comprehensive three-year warranty available. Hitachi, science for the senses. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of the player of the game and Hitachi at a future game. Petrie is still on the mound in Boston for Detroit. With Marzano scoring and then wild pitch five to one Boston leading. It's tied at one here. Freddie Lynn he's 0 for two tonight. Ground ball down to Upshaw the first baseman. He'll make the unassisted put up. Three up three down for Dave Steve and the Blue Jays. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. We have an update from Boston. Mike Greenwell has hit a sacrifice fly to score another runner. It is six to one. They're still in the bottom of the fourth inning. Boston leading Detroit tonight. Now should Detroit lose and the Blue Jays win this one tonight. Of course the Jays will be in top spot by half a game. Petrie's out of the ball game now in Boston. We'll have to wait to tell you who's coming in. Tied at one here. George Bell will lead it off in the seventh inning. Boddicker. Oh, that's hit high in the air to left, but not that deep as Sheets will wait close to the warning track. Bell just missed that high fastball. A little bit out of the strike zone. He got good wood on it, but it was a little bit too far upstairs. Really couldn't get on top of it. If we can take a shot of uh, left field, you can see see that scoreboard there in left center, the Toyota sign, and you see the grandstand there. Bell hit one into those trees, deep into those trees, for a grand slam here. Okay, I guess you can't see the trees there. We're working in closer. There they are. It's a little dark out there, but uh, he hung a ball right up in those trees. <laughs> Thurman has now come on the pitch for Detroit. Ernie Witt takes the ball here. One down, seventh inning, tied at one. That's lined in the center field, and Hart will wait for it. Two down. 
you can see the pace of this game has really moved because these pitchers are throwing a lot of strikes. Boddicker and Steve both throwing a lot of first pitch strikes. Boddicker's retired eight in a row. Of course, we'll be here tomorrow night at 7.30. And then Montreal at New York, Thursday, September 24th at 7.30. That's a biggie right here on TSN. Those Expos have done such a great job this season, staying in contention. Boy, Buck Rogers has to be the manager of the year. I know that Roger Craig has done a great job in San Francisco. There's a lot more to work with, I think. I think so. Here's a look at the three-game series coming up at Toronto, September 28th. The Brewers come in town. Remember how tough that young Brewer club was on the Blue Jays over in Milwaukee. Should be an interesting series. Jesse Barfield. He's one for two tonight. Thurman in the pitch for Detroit now. Petrie out of the ball game. Five hits here at Memorial Stadium for the Blue Jays. Two for the Baltimore Orioles off Dave Steve. What a job he has done tonight. Two balls and a strike to Barfield. Good change up that just ran back over the outside corner. Boddicker starts it on the outside, turns it over, and it drops right on the outside corner. Hit to right field down the line. Will it stay fair? No. Curves. Foul ball. You know, one of the theories about the reason Boddicker has struggled this year is the fact that he doesn't have any hard throwers around him. Most of these young kids are very similar to. Boddicker himself. They're off-speed pitchers. They throw a lot of breaking balls and change-up. Years ago, he had Palmer, Flanagan, and Storm Davis around him that had good stuff. And then his off-speed stuff was a real contrast. Full count to Barfield. Two down, seven. I think Boddicker hurt his back on that pitch. He really fell off the mound. Funny, off balance. He had some problems with his back in the past. I'm sure he's not ready to throw yet. Look at him taking. Watch here as he comes off. Watch his follow through. He'll slip. Look at he winces in pain right at the end. Good shot there. Well, now he's been forced to leave four games this year due to four separate injuries. He missed one start in August due to a strained back. Boy, if things aren't going bad enough, yeah. Boddicker's finally cranking up a good game for the Orioles. Might have hurt his back on that last pitch. A high chopper down tonight, the third baseman. It's a foul ball. It's a foul ball, so Barfield will come back. And the count will remain the same. Ray three Mon and two. Ray Knight was standing right on the line, but third base umpire Al Clark got a good look at it. He waved it foul. Looked pretty close to me. Watch this bounding ball down the third base line. Just watch where Knight is standing now. Standing right on the line. Straddles the line. Takes the ball in foul territory. Clark has perfect angle on the ball. Watch how he's positioned perfectly. That ball looks like Knight might have had some trouble with it into the lights, but Al Clark waved it foul. Or if he will give him another chance. Stick your catcher's glove out for that one, Buck. <laughs> That's too close. as I might have thought. Chop foul. Tomorrow night, Jeff Ballard at 2 and 6 will go against Jim Clancy. He's 14 and 10. We'll have that one for you at 7.30 right here on TSN. And Detroit will play second game of their three-game series up in Boston. Four innings in Boston tonight. It is six to one. Red Sox leading. Barfield draws a walk with two down here in the seventh inning. 
And that'll bring up Rance Mullenix, who doubled off the left field wall in the fifth inning. He's one for two tonight. I think Potaker's struggling a little bit. You too can help strike out Iliadis and Kalaitis. There are the numbers to call. As Mark Wiley, the pitching coach, comes out now. For every strikeout, Tom Hankey and Mark Icorn register. People in many companies across Canada are donating money to help the cause. Over 200,000 sufferers of iliitis and colitis. Some people are paying just 50 cents a strikeout, some a dollar. And of course, companies are paying much, much more than that, but they've raised between 150 and 200,000 dollars now over the course of the year. Isn't that sensational? It all goes to a good cause. And we thank our many, many viewers, all the companies that have, that have participated. Mark Wiley came out and talked with Boddicker. You've got to believe that there's something bothering him with that bat sure because is. he's no hemming and hawing. You know, we saw him earlier. He was really picking up the pace of the game. Foul back out of play. Taking his time. Bolnix doubled off Boddicker last time up down in the left field corner. Barfield has two stolen bases, but he's been thrown out five times. Bolnix late on that fastball. So Boddicker ahead of the count, 0 and 2. Boddicker still trying to loosen up that back. You know, for a guy like Boddicker, who's 0-3 against the Blue Jays this year, and Dave Steve, who has never won against Baltimore in this stadium, we're seeing quite a pitching matchup, aren't we? Pretty good matchup. Yes, you know, sir. that thoroughbred coming out in yeah. both of the pitchers. They're quality pitchers. They it's a good had, way to describe it. They know that it's a big game, and they're both giving grand account of themselves. Nice save by Kennedy. Two balls and two strikes now to Mullinex with Barfield at first, two down, seventh inning. Score tied at one. Watch Kennedy really shift quickly, catching this curveball, backhands it in the dirt. Nice play. Two and two, two outs. Barfield might be going right here. Got to figure Boddicker's going to be around the plate. Molnix can put it in play. There, there he goes. goes. High fly ball to left center field. Hart is there. Sheets is there. Hart will make the catch. <laughs> so the Blue Jays leave Jesse Barfield stranded here in the seventh, and it's tied at one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Oh, what a little dolly here. Out there dancing. That got him a country boy with John Denver. She already knows where the TV Whoa. camera is, too. She huh? sure did, didn't she? <laughs> she had a great big smile for us. Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll be Murray, Ripken, and Sheets to face right-hander Dave Steve, who has allowed only two base hits through six. And the Orioles have stranded two runners. That's it. Murray, who singled in the second, was erased on a double play. And then uh, he walked Eddie Murray after Dwyer hit that home run. He left Murray stranded in the fourth. And then in the fifth, he hit Ray Knight, and he was left stranded. So Dave Steve has been absolutely brilliant tonight through six. This man's a tough customer, Eddie Murray. Two balls and no strikes. Murray's a good fastball hitter. We talked about his bat. He is one of the biggest bats in the American League. 38 ounces. But he can get it going. Three balls and no strikes now. As Musselman on the right and Dwayne Ward on the left start throwing in the Blue Jay bullpen. Musselman 11 and 4. Three saves. And Ward 1-0. That's 
hit to left field. Bell is right there waiting for it. One down. Murray with the green light, 3-0. He winds to George Bell in left field. That'll bring up Cal Ripken, the shortstop. One down, bottom of the seventh inning. You don't get Eddie Murray's. A triple shooter up there. A three and all pitch. He is awfully dangerous. He made a pretty good pitch on him. Got it on the outside half of the plate. He went after that pitch for a strike. What a great slider there. Steve started that out at the middle of the plate. Ripken thought it was a fastball. Buck, what do you think is happening Ripken this year? Do you think the fact that his father's managing this club and it's going nowhere has really played on his mind? Molinex will make that catch for the putout. Well, that'll bring up uh, Larry Sheets, the left fielder. Larry Sheets, it's been a disappointing year for the club, but boy, you've really put together some great numbers by getting a chance to play every day. Well, I think that was, you know, my goal at the beginning of the year was to, to try to prove that I deserved to play every day. And, um, you know, with some injuries and with the way the team was going and uh, I started swinging the bat fairly well, that opportunity came up and, you know, things have worked out pretty well. With two down, the bottom of the seventh, Sheets will face Dave Steen. Getting back to Ripken, what do you think? I don't think it's really uh, bothered him that his father's managing. He's got 24 homers and 90 RBIs. Those are pretty good numbers in anybody's book. He's down to 255. I think it's time for him to take a rest. He's played so many games in a row. There's the score in the middle of five in Boston, 6-1. Red Sox over the Tigers. But I think Ripka needs to take some time off now. Take a few days here and there. There's no reason to play every game. A change up that Sheets hits to center field. Mosby will come in and make the catch for the put up. So Dave Steve now is retired eight in a row and it's tied at one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Quite a ball game here at Memorial Stadium tonight. Tied at one. We're going to the eighth inning. It'll be Leach, Upshaw, and Liriano to face the right hander Mike Boddicker. Boddicker was one and two this month, and over the last three years is one and nine after September the first. He's had some tough luck this year, too. Five times he's left a game with a chance for a win, only to have the bullpen blow the lead. Mark Williamson, the right hander out there. Williamson with a record of eight wins, nine losses, and he's got three saves. Leach fouls that one back out of play. Just five hits for the Blue Jays. George Bell has a pair. Barfield with a single, Mullenix with a double, and Upshaw with a double. That's it. And it was Leach who got the RBI, which drove in Toronto's only run. And he actually hit into a double play. Bonnaker's really wearing out that high fastball to Leach. He feels like he's got a weakness there and he's going to stay with it. He's already thrown just over 100 pitches. strikes. That's number eight for Boddicker. Boddicker really has a good fastball tonight. This one sinks away from Rick Leach. After seeing so many high fastballs, it's a tough pitch to handle. Down and away. It's the second time he has struck out. Of course, you know the Blue Jays get all pumped up to go into New York for that series, that four-game series. They ended up splitting it at two games apiece. And they've won nine out of ten against Baltimore. So you know that this first game they're going to come in here and maybe take Baltimore just a little too lightly. And that's I'm not 
not saying that's what's happened because Boddicker has been I think, sensational. I think Boddicker's just cranking up a good game. But it's against something him. you got to think about. Cal Ripken Sr. is making his way out there, and I think he's got concern over Boddicker's physical well-being. I think Boddicker has got a back problem. I think Ripken's going to take him out of the game. you got to give him a lot of credit for that. One game is not worth jeopardizing someone's career. Boddicker obviously in pain. He's hurt his back. He hurt it on that pitch last inning. It's tightening up on him. There's Mark Williamson down on the pin. He's loosening up. Cal Ripken's going to make the move. Well, he's checking with Boddicker, and I, Boddicker's <laughs> looks like he doesn't want to come out. No question about it. He wants to stay in the game, but you have to think about the long-term consequences. A.B. Phillips, the home plate umpire out there to see what's going on. Boddicker's saying, let me go ahead and go, Cal. Yep, he's going to go. Well, at least that's an official game in Boston now, because as we told you, it was raining earlier. Through five, Boston leading Detroit six to one. It has stopped raining. Willie Upshaw will step in to face Boddicker. He's one for two. Struck out on the fifth. Got around on that one. Just a little too far, though. That Sunday, Fan Appreciation Day, Panasonic, and they'll be giving away lots of prizes. The Blue Jays will set an all-time attendance record this year. Ray Knight will call for it. Two down. Bodiker took over, called the signals, called everyone off, let Ray Knight take it. It was a major league pop-up. Bodiker directing traffic out there. Nelson Liriano, who is 0 for 3, but Mike Hart made a great catch back in the third inning, took a base hit away from Liriano. He has hit safely in 19 of the 24 games that he has played in since he was called up from Syracuse. Liriano, the fact that he was called up a day early, will be eligible for the playoffs. Well, that caught umpire and catcher both. Caught Davey Phillips right on the fingers of that right hand. Went off Kennedy's mask. Upshaw turns around the bunt, hits Kennedy's mask, and you can see Phillips' fingers outstretched right on the ends of those fingers. We talked about that the other day, umpires to try to hide those hands. They all have a little bit of a work on getting their positioning uh, correct. Let me have a look at your hands. Are any bent fingers? No, no they haven't. No, How about that? Quick a catcher should look at them, and that's what they'll have. Fingers all over the place. Pointing in every direction. Boy, it's funny. Buck Rogers, his two fingers on his right hand, the index finger goes this way, and the other one goes across. The, they go in opposite directions. You hold them up. <laughs> I fly ball to left field that Sheets will wait for. So another three up, three down inning for Mike Boddicker and the Baltimore Orioles. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning, tied at one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. We have a pitching change now for the Toronto Blue Jays. Here in the eighth inning, Jeff Musselman has come on to face Knight, Kennedy, and Hart. But what a job Dave Steve did. Seven innings, just two hits, struck out two, walked one, and gave up that home run to Jim Dwyer in the fourth inning. Boy, that sure has to be encouraging as he threw 92 pitches tonight. Boy, what an outing for Dave Steve. And he gives way to Jeff Musselman, who will make his 64th appearance on the year. But nice going, Dave Steve. is game coming back into the rotation. And as we said earlier, Buck, uh, Baltimore only left two runners stranded through seven innings. Simply went out there, threw strikes, and overpowered the Oriole hitters. I know you want to get Steve out on a positive note. Musselman. You see the appearance that he is making here tonight. Now he is 1-0 with a save against Baltimore this year. Remember he made his only start of the season against these Orioles. He 
He's pitched a total of nine innings, given up three earned runs, a home run, and struck out four, has walked three against Baltimore. So the game belongs to Musselman. Base hit in the left field by Ray Knight. Well, now you've got the catcher, Terry Kennedy, up. Left hander, I'm sure he'll be bunting. Ray Knight makes the first offering from Jeff Musselman and beats it into the ground, but it's by Fernandez in the left field. Lead off single here in the bottom of the eighth. Be a pinch runner for Knight. And the question you have to ask immediately, was it Jimmy Williams who took out Steve? Did Steve want to come out? Did they want to get Steve out on a positive note? No, I think that they felt that they had enough arms down in the bullpen. Steve had given him seven strong innings. And they were going to make a move. There you look at the skipper. Crossing out Ray Knight, putting in Ray Gonzalez. Pinch runner. So Gonzalez down there at first. Kennedy will square to bunt. And Musselman tries to pick off Gonzalez. Boy, that would have not sat too well with Cal Ripken. We send a pinch runner in there and gets picked off before he throws a pitch home. Well, Rennie Gonzalez is a journeyman ball player. By throwing the first base, that really helps out the infielders. Kennedy gives his hand away. He turned around showing bunt. Mullenix can charge hard down the third baseline. They took it off, switched off on him. Kennedy looks down at Jimmy Williams, the third base coach for Baltimore. Will they put the bunt back on? No strike, evens it up at one and one. Good fastball. Mike Hart is the next hitter in the on deck circle. Musselman has learned his move from Jimmy Key. And he's got a good one. Not as good as Keys, but it's still a good one. Gonzalez gets a pretty good lead over there. Oh, and he slips. But he kept that foot on the bag, and he might have twisted an ankle. Sure looked like he twisted his ankle as he stepped on top of the bag, and his ankle gave way. He's out testing it out. Now watch as he gets right back on the bag. He'll slip. Right on top of the bag. Look at that. Turn way over. Who did we see? Was that Mosby that did that the other day in one of our telecasts? Slipped and fell down. Nice bunt there. Upshaw will have one play. Kennedy gets the job done. And Gonzalez moves on down to second. And that'll bring up Mike Hart. The center fielder, he's 0 for 2. That's Kennedy's first sacrifice bunt of the year, and it's a dandy. Upshot charge again. Looks to second base. No play there, and he has to go to first, but Kennedy gets the job done here in the eighth. Let's look at the veteran catcher. As we look ahead to the ninth inning, Mosby, Fernandez, and Bell are the scheduled hitters for the Blue Jays. Popped up in the infield. Fernandez. Two down. That'll bring up the leadoff hitter, Pete Stenisic. He's over three, lined up, grounded out, and struck out. Stenisic will turn around and back from the right side against lefty Musselman. He's 0 for 3 on the night. Witt's going to go out there and make sure that Musselman has an idea how they'd like to pitch to Stanisek from the right side. Stanisek is one for 16 of Blue Jay pitching this year. 
Ernie Wynn will be our guest on Extra Innings tonight. There's the number to call. Mark that down, please. 416-445-1811. Call us, collect. We'll try to get as many calls on as we can. And ask Ernie, you can ask him about all those home runs he hit. Stannis acts a natural right-handed hitter. Not until 1985 in the Florida Instructional League did he turn around and bat from the left side. In 1986, it was his first full year of switch hitting and he at 317. So he's a natural right-hander. Two down, eighth inning. Here's the pitch, low outside. In the sixth inning now, after five and a half, 6-1, Boston leading. Oakland and Cleveland tied at three. Oakland trying to stay pace. Time has been called. Oakland trying to stay pace. There's little, look at the, yeah, those are bats. Those are lively bats. Those are cork yeah. bats. <laughs> They're definitely cork. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Gonzalez on at second base with two outs. Has very good speed. Musselman behind in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Jimmy Dwyer who hit that home run. In the fourth inning is the scheduled hitter. And they are going to walk Stanisic and pitch to the left-handed hitting Dwyer. I think they're going to be seeing Lee Lacey come off the bench. And here he comes. Jimmy Williams. Opting to walk Stanisek. There's a base open with two outs. And Lee Lacey's the batter. He's going to hit for Jim Dwyer. Lacey has really hit the Blue Jays well over the years. Last year he hit 378. There's Jimmy Williams. He's got Dwayne Ward down in the bullpen. Oh, it's been up and throwing for an inning. Lacey's a 15-year veteran, and he's a pretty decent hitter. There's the call for Dwayne Ward. Williams wants this matchup, Ward against Lacey. Maybe hoping that Cal Ripken will make the move and counter with a left-handed hitter of his own. He's got Mike Young over on the bench, Alan Wiggins. When you manage, you got to be three or four moves ahead at least. No doubt about that. Mike Young. So now Lacey walks back to the dugout. Here they are the two. Oh, there's a bat that dropped down beside Jimmy Williams, the third base coach, and uh, uh, he did a little dance to get away from that. There's a few of those things flying around here. There are two Jimmy Williams. No relation. <laughs> Jimmy Williams on the left. It's from Toronto, and the major difference is the spelling. The Jimmy's. Williams is the same. Jimmy's different. Jimmy said he's played that as a joke in school and stuck with it. Took one of the M's out of his name. Well, Ward's last appearance this season was against these Baltimore Orioles last Tuesday night in Toronto's 6-2 win. He pitched an inning and gave up two earned runs. A strikeout, a walk, gave up a couple of hits. You'll remember, of course, I think his most impressive performance was against the Yankees when he struck out the side. Look at that bat there. It's going like a bat out of you know where. Look at him. Right out of the stadium. Now the grounds crew out. What are they going to do? <laughs> They're on bat patrol. Yeah, that's right. Get the guns out. <laughs> oh. Oh. Whoa. Hey. They're mating. I, that's what's probably happening. One. Wow. What? Now what is he trying to do? Well, you don't want to get too close to those things. Makes the scoop it short. No, Tony's going to grab it with that gold glove. This is live 
television, folks. Once again, out of the shovel. A great play at short. Watch, he won't be able to get him out of his well, glove if now. That, if that thing flies, Tony's going to run. The Count Dracula won't oh, three. <laughs> Whoa. Barry, Barry Fiat. <laughs> well, I've seen it all now. <laughs> He's That's into the bat cave. <laughs> oh boy. Do, do you do you think Sarah Ferguson would have used to miss for that? Okay, Dwayne Ward on the mound. Two down, bottom of the eighth inning. Lacey is a pinch hitter. Four for nine with three RBIs. Gonzalez at second. Stanisek at first. A ball and no strikes to Lacey. Uh, that one right back to where we're sitting. One and one. Lacey's on a six game hitting streak right now. Lacey likes the ball out over the plate. Ward has that good sinker. He can run on his hands. If they crowd him with a fastball. Misses away. Just misses. You see, Lacey hits out of a closed stance, likes the ball out over the plate. He'll hit the ball on the right side of the field nine times out of ten. Mosby reflects that. He's in the right center. Barfield's over towards the line and right. Lariano straight away at second. Ward's got good stuff tonight. Off of that ball of Ernie Witt. He's got a good fastball. Three balls and a strike to Lacey. Two down, eighth inning. Score tied at one. This is the pitch of the ball game right here. Outside, base is loaded. And up comes Freddie Lynn. Down and away. Ford just really didn't have command of that fastball. He had good stuff, and Jimmy Williams is going to go out and make a move to bring in left-hander John Cerruti, I believe. That's who's warming up in the bullpen. He's got Cerruti down there. He's ready. Of course, you'll remember that Cerruti's last outing was in New York when he didn't retire a batter. Walked Ricky Henderson, gave up a single to Willie Randolph and a two-run homer to Don Mattingly. This last Friday night. So Rudy against Baltimore is 1-0 in a couple of games this year. He's given up five earned runs in 12 and two-thirds innings. A couple of homers, six walks, and a struck out five. So not an impressive performance against Baltimore, but the game will be on the line. And Freddie Lynn has really been the clutch hitter for Baltimore this season. Wade Boggs is at the plate in Boston. Here's the 2-1 pitch with two on and Boggs a double into the right field corner. So that should score two runs. Ellis Burks around the score. Pat Sheridan picks the ball up down in the corner. Whitaker relays over to third. Boggs is out at third, but two runs come in to score. It is eight to one. Putting it on the Tigers. Taking a little bit of their frustration out. For the, the Tigers season. might be thinking ahead to Toronto, too. Cerruti with the bases loaded here at Baltimore. And Fred Lynn will be the batter. This will be Cerruti's 19th relief appearance. There's 10 and 4 record. 4.33 ERA. His 30, his 40th appearance overall. John's worked in 145 and a third innings. He's facing a tough hitter in Fred Lynn. With the bases loaded. Two outs. Lynn can take you deep, and that man right there, John Cerruti, has given up more home runs than any other pitcher on the Blue Jay staff. So you look down to third, pinch runner Rennie Gonzalez in for Ray Knight, who led off this eighth inning with a single. And at second 
is Pete Stanisic. He was walked intentionally, and then Lacey was walked by reliever Dwayne Ward to load the bases. And Freddie Lynn strolls to the plate. one in Boston after six complete innings it is tied here at one in the bottom of the eighth with the bases loaded chop down the first base side foul this is a tough situation for John Cerruti coming in with the bases loaded like this he doesn't have an awful lot of room to utilize all of his pitches and that's what makes him so effective is the ability to throw Curveball, changeup, palm ball, fastball, all of his pitches. And in a situation like this, he's got to throw strikes. He has to know what he threw well out in the bullpen and what he can get over right now. Pitch to Lynn. Blown away. Two balls and a strike. That's a good pitch from Saruti. He dropped that curveball on the outside, just missing away. Shows me he's got confidence in all his pitches and he's warmed up well. He can use everything in his repertoire. Pops it up in the infield. Ernie Witt, Willie Upshaw coming in. Witt will make the catch. What a job by John Cerruti with the bases loaded. That's some kind of relief pitching. John Cerruti came in and made a fine pitch on Fred Lynn to strand three Oriole runners. So at the end of eight, still tied here in Baltimore. We're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to TSN control for this update. Tied at one, we go to the ninth inning, and Baltimore manager Cal Ripken is out there on the mound talking with Mike Boddicker. Kennedy is out there, and what Ripken wants Boddicker to do is to take a couple of pitches and see if he's okay. He has sat on the bench for a while. He has had some back problems. We've just been informed the Detroit Tigers have picked up right-hander Dickie Knowles from the Chicago Cubs for a player to be named later. So they're trying to get some pitching help for the Toronto series. You faced Knowles before, Buck. What do you think? Well, it's not a blockbuster deal, but you never know. You come up, might need a right-hander to get a tough right-hander out. George Bell, you haven't faced him all year. Dickie Knowles is a new look. You haven't seen him for a while. Who knows? He might be. Rennie Gonzalez will stay in the ball game and play third base. And Lacey will be out in right field. The heart of the Blue Jay order, Mosby, Fernandez, and Bell here in the ninth inning. It is tied at one. Three hits for Baltimore, five for the Blue Jays. thing about Bodiger, he's not big enough, is he? Boy, he's sure not. You got to give him a lot of credit. He's battled tough all night. He's been out there for the last two innings with some back problems. And now Ripken has asked him a couple times if he thought he should come out. He's really stuck in there. Fouled back out of play. So Bodiger ahead of Mosby 0-2. Boy, he's made some great pitches on Lloyd Mosby all night long, moving that fastball in and out. Turning the occasional fastball over, most be struck out twice. Bonicker has really made some tough pitches. Going away this time. Whoa, right on the knees. Mosby has struck out a couple of times tonight. Nineteen home runs off of right-handers. He'd love to make it number twenty here. Drilled into the stands. 
There's action out in that. That's Needenfuhr, I think, on the right. Tom Brookins is homered for Detroit. It is now eight to two. Mark Williamson's the other right-hander. He's been up before. Needenfuhr's the short man. He's had eight saves since All-Star break. Mosby steps back, calls time. One, two pitch, changeup. Like to get this guy on here. Mosby's got good speed. Start things off. Top of the ninth inning. You know, earlier this season, one of Boddicker's losses to Toronto, it was a three to two loss, and with two down in the ninth inning, Garth Ord stroked a single to win the ball game. Here we are in the ninth inning. Nobody on. And Orge hasn't played for about three weeks, has he? And a pinch hit appearance against Dave Rigetti of the Yankees, and that's it. Inside. And Nelson Liriano, I can't understand how he has been in the minor leagues all season long. Well, you know, they went with Mike Sharperson for the first month and a half of the season, and then tried Garth Orge there. Liriano, they're trying to get him some confidence. And that's foul as well. The season he had in Syracuse. Really. Watch Brookins home run here. And watch Nipper. Watch Nipper here. Number 49. Saying bye bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> Eight to two in that one. Mosby hits it to left field. Sheets has got to come in. And he doesn't get to it. It looked like he was going to get there. Ball wasn't hit that hard, so Mosby has a double. What a nice job of hitting by Lloyd Mosby and Larry Sheets. Took a rough landing out there. He comes hard. Sheets doesn't have all that great a speed, but you can see the effort is there. He dies, and it just goes off the end of his glove. I think that would have been a trap had it stayed in yes, his glove. It would have been. But Mosby's on with such a key leadoff double here in the ninth inning. Eight and Fuhr on the right, and Mark Williams on the left. Now, Fernandez's job will be to get Mosby down to third base. So you'll want to hit the ball to the right side of the infield, preferably with a base hit. A sixth hit off Boddicker. Ripken says to Eddie Murray, be alive for that drag bunt. Murray's playing way deep at first base. He can't get any drag but from that position. Cal Ripken moving in behind Mosby at second. Hernandez can play a little bit with this bat. He's a master with that bat choked up. He can slap the ball. Pull it on the right side. They're in the bottom of the seventh now. Boston up. It's eight to two there. He lays a beautiful bunt down to Gonzalez, who fires it to Murray. So Fernandez gets the job done. Mosby's at third with what could be the game winning run. And the batter, the RBI leader in the American League, George Bell, with 128. I think you're going to see him walk. You can count on that. They'll put Bell on, try to set up the double play. Now yeah, Ripken's going to go out, talk things over right here. Fans are hollering, no, no, don't take him out, Cal. Believe me, Cal doesn't want to take him out. He's just talking about, he's talking to Davey Phillips to make sure that they understand one another about could be a trip for an injury. Well, the first visit, I think, was the trip for the injury. That's what he was saying. He yeah. said, I want you to know I'm not yeah. trying to buy this injury stuff anymore. We're out here talking baseball now. Ask him his preference, I'm sure. What do you want to do? You want to pitch the bell? You want to put him on? There's a look at the numbers. 128. 
So after Bell, you've got Ernie Witt and Jesse Barfield. One down. Bell already has two hits. Chances are they're going to walk. Now Terry Kennedy's got something in his eye. Trying to to get it out. Looks to me like they're going to pitch to him, just checking out the infield. They've got the infield drawn in. Ripken's in it, grass is short. Stand a second, second. Eddie Murray at first. Well, I would suggest it's a mistake if they do. I have to agree with you. All Bell needs is a sacrifice fly. As you can see, he's already got two hits tonight. Ball bounces away from Kennedy. Bell's got nine sacrifice flies on the season. They're going to try and do the same thing that Mock did. They won't throw him a strike. And hopefully they'll try to get Bell to swing at a bad pitch. Well, that's one thing he has really been able to do this year is be patient at the plate. He's got so much confidence now. He can wait and make sure he's zoned in his area. He's going to get a good pitch before he swings it. Breaking ball for a strike. It's one and one. He's really matured as a hitter. I guarantee you the most surprised guy in the ballpark is George Bell right now. Base hit, left field, it's two to one. Blue Jays lead it. I can't believe they pitched to him, but they did. I don't understand that. We oh, got the, the leading. leading RBI hitter in the American League. That's number 129. And now Ripken will come out. There's no reason to let George Bell beat you in this situation. We've got a base open. Ernie Witt, of course, a left-handed batter. But you're setting up the double play with one out. Cal Ripken, that Boddicker pitch to Bell, and Bell wins the confrontation for his 129th RBI, and he's got the Blue Jays ahead by a run here in the top of the ninth. I wonder if that's a decision that Ripken made, or did he let Boddicker make it? Back? I think Ripken made the decision. George Bell's going to give way to pinch runner Rob Ducey, and he'll get a well-deserved welcome in the dugout. Three hits tonight, and he has put the Blue Jays up two to one. Mike Boddicker received a warm welcome into the dugout. He pitched a nice game for the Orioles, but. There's no question, Buck Martinez, that George Bell has carried this club all season long. He's had so many key hits, 46 home runs, 129 RBIs. And if he doesn't win the MVP in the American League, they should hold an investigation. You can hear George talking down there. He's talking to Moshe saying, can you believe they pitched to me in that situation? What are they thinking about over there? I can't believe it. But boy, has he come through once again. That's Nelson Liriano on the right. And a youngster, a rookie that'll just sit and listen. Look, he's always got a smile on his face. You just look at him and he just looks like he's happy to be here. That's all. He's having a good time. <laughs> Mark Williamson comes on. Look at his record, eight and nine on the season. Three saves, 3.82 ERA. And he's really been one of the few bright spots. 56th appearance now. Well, he's already established a club record for the most appearances by a rookie. And he's led the club in ERA since the All-Star break. Six and four with a couple of saves in his last 27 appearances. So he hasn't done a bad job. He pitched an inning in the first game of that doubleheader yesterday in relief of Jose Mesa. And Mesa lost to Roger Clemens 5-1. to one. You know, they're happy with Jose Mesa. That's the player that the Baltimore Orioles got in return for Mike Flanagan. And really, it's been a good deal for both sides. Although Mesa hasn't won, he has pitched very well. Fergie, they're not happy with him. They're thrilled with yeah. him. They love his arm. Talking with Elrod Hendricks before the game, they said, man, this kid's got a great arm. And when you have somebody that throws hard like Mesa, you can really develop a good pitcher. He's got a strong arm, a lot of promise, and they're pleased to have him. 
Ernie Weddle face Mark Williamson here with one out. Rob Ducey, pinch runner at first base. Well, Cal Ripken Sr. and the Baltimore Orioles did the Blue Jays a favor here tonight by pitching to George Bell. In the ninth inning, Bell, an RBI single to drive in the go-ahead run, 2-1, to one, Toronto leading. Ducey, the pinch runner for Bell at first. The batter is Ernie Witt. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Pitches inside. Williamson came over with Terry Kennedy in that Storm Davis deal with San Diego. It is now nine to two up in Boston for the Red Sox. Spike Owen is singled, and Sam Horn, who is standing on third, scored. As the Red Sox really putting it to the Tigers tonight. And if the Blue Jays can hold on here in the ninth inning, they'll have a half game lead over Detroit. And the big four game series coming up starts Thursday. Apparently Doyle Alexander will be starting for Detroit Thursday night against Jimmy Key. There will not be an empty seat in the house. Barfield the batter. And a good fastball. Good fastball right there. Blew it by Barfield. Williamson, as we talked about, showing a lot of promise. He's going to get a chance to pitch over here in Baltimore, no question about that. They've got a lot of holes to fill in that pitching staff. For promising young arms, it's going to take them a while to rebuild this club, but that's what they have on their mind. Pitch out, nothing doing. Right now, John Cerruti stands to pick up the victory here tonight. If the Blue Jays can hold on, he's 10 and 4 coming into tonight's game. A 1 2 pitch to Barfield. He's jammed and fouls it back. Wow, that would have hit him right in the belly button if he hadn't just fought it off. Williamson really ran. <laughs> Look at Jesse saying, wow. He really ran that sinker ball inside. Because he just doing his best to fight it off. Don't forget, Buck and I will be here tomorrow night at 7.30. Blue Jays and Orioles, game two of this series. Along with our producer, Tom McKee, director Michael Lansbury. Time has been called. Side evens it up with two balls and two strikes. Might see Ducey going on this pitch, two and two with two outs, trying to get something moving. Maybe Barfield could shoot one into a gap. There he goes. There he goes. Off the handle down to Ripken, and he'll fire it across as Barfield broke his back. But we're heading to the bottom of the ninth, and the three toughest hitters in the Orioles lineup coming up. Murray, Ripken, and Sheets. So don't go away. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. A two to one ball game. Bottom of the ninth inning here in Baltimore. As the Terminator, Tom Hankey, has come on to pitch for the Blue Jays. He'll face Murray, Ripken, and Sheets, the heart of that Baltimore lineup. Hankey with three career saves against Baltimore. This year, he's got one save in five appearances. Five and a third inning, seven hits, and he has struck out seven. Hankey did a nice job yesterday at Yankee Stadium to clinch that 6-2 victory. He did not get a save for it. Gruber has come in to play third base. And Rob Ducey, who came in to pinch run for George Bell, will stay out and play left field. So Eddie Murray, who is one for two tonight, a single in the second inning, to stretch his hitting streak now to 14 games, will face Hankey. After seven innings in Boston. 
first inning is 9 to 2. They talked to Detroit to come back on that one. Hankey with 32 saves. He made his 69th appearance yesterday at Yankee Stadium. Pitched a couple of innings. Gave up just one hit. Struck out four. Good ball. Good change up out in front. Murray, we talked about being a good fastball hitter. He comes up with a good off-speed pitch. And Murray out in front. Hankey has just two saves for the month of September. Fouled back out of play. His best month was July with 10. He was the Rolaids relief pitcher of the, of the month. Since the All-Star break, 15 saves. He's just had a sensational year for the Blue Jays. Watch how Ernie Witt sets up here. Right down the middle. Off-speed pitch. He wants that change up there. They can go off-speed pitch. The ball will one away from Murray. They can bust him upstairs with that good fastball. Murray likes the ball down. He can hit it to all fields, but watch the target. It'll be up trying to go with a high fastball. Hit into center field. Mosby's got to come in because it was hit off the end of the bat. One down. That'll bring up Cal Ripken Jr. He's 0 for 3 tonight. And going out to right. Blue Jays looking to win their 91st game of the season. They've lost 59. Ripken tonight 0 for 3. He has popped up, flied out. Popped up again in the seventh to Mullenix, who's playing third at that. Pass ball for a strike. All of a sudden, it's going from the left field corner to right field. Might have helped this ball a little yeah. bit. And had he got a little higher, who knows what he would have done with it. But Barfield comes in and makes the second out of the inning. And in the right field corner. There's a look at that flag. It's going in from left field across to the right field That's corner. It's a perfect setup for Sheets. Pass ball that's down. Murray with 29 home runs. Ripken with 24. And Sheets with 29. Two down. And with the wind blowing out to right, you got to be careful. Two balls and no strikes. Well, Hinky's taking on their best. Larry Sheets trying to keep the Oriole hopes alive here in the ninth. go back into the stands. That was off Sheets' handle. There's he's checking it out. See if it's still together. Two balls and a strike on Larry Sheets. Two outs. <laughs> Chop foul. So it's two balls and two strikes to Sheets. Ask me how many people were here tonight, and I'm only guessing. I would say in the neighborhood of 10,000. That might be very kind. I don't know that there are that many here. They're spread out, but fans there are. Two and two is the count. Larry Sheets, the batter. He gets him, catches him looking. The Blue Jays win it two to one. Tom Hankey, save number 33 for the season. As Sheets does not like that call by home plate umpire Davey Phillips, who just turns and walks away. Fastball outside corner. Larry Sheets disagrees, but what a pitcher's matchup tonight. Boddicker against Steve. And Steve does not figure in the decision, but the Blue Jays now in first place 
a half game ahead of Detroit, provided Boston will hold on to their 9-2 lead. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Labatt's Blue Jays baseball has been brought to you by Petro-Canada dealers and agents. Our energy is Canada. And by General Motors of Canada, who says join us at the 1988 Calgary Winter Olympics. This has been a special presentation of the Sports Network, produced in association with TV Labatt and protected by copyright. Any use of this telecast without permission is prohibited. The final score, the Blue Jays win it 2-1. to one. The winning pitcher, John Cerruti at 11-4. Mike Boddicker took the loss to even up his record at 10-10. and 10. The Labatt's players of the game for Toronto. Who else but George Bell will receive the Hitachi DA400. And for Baltimore, Mike Boddicker will receive the Cannon Sure Shot. As well, two amateur baseball teams will be the guests of George Bell, Cannon, and Hitachi at a future game. Major League Baseball next on TSN. Tuesday, that's tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern, we'll bring you game two of this series between the Jays and the Orioles. Then on Thursday, September the 24th at 7.30 Eastern, the Expos will be at Shea Stadium to take on the New York Mets. Our baseball magic winners tonight, Iris Calhoun of London, Ontario, and Joe Myers of Ancaster, Ontario. Now, stay tuned for extra innings. Our guest will be catcher Ernie Witt. We'll be taking your calls in just a few moments, and there's the number to call. Please call Collette.